Hey there, it's me again looking all sweaty and tired. For some reason, after a good workout, I have some thoughts to share. Anyways, thoughts on relationships? Hey, it's Susan. I was thinking, I'm talking to a friend of mine, and we've both been single for a while, and we kind of throw things back and forth about dating and stuff. And the other night at the vision board, everyone there was single, and we were kind of a little bit talking about relationships and dating. But for this video, I just wanted to talk about something that I heard the other day. I was somehow stumbled on a YouTube video and it was um, Matthew Hussey. He talks a lot about relationships and he had brought up a point as far as like, you know, initially meeting someone and stuff like there was kind of some, you know, tips for that because as much as like women want to say men should make the first move, men, majority of men, like there are some, this doesn't apply to, but the majority of men want to feel like there's a little opening there like maybe you say hi or you smile or you know you start a conversation just so they know okay I can talk to her because basically he gave a scenario like on an average day like especially in like a city or something a man may pass by you know 30 women he thinks are attractive and he's not gonna go up and start talking to each one of them right like who does he know who's in a relationship or married or just not interested so for him he doesn't want to be rejected you know 25 30 times so he would wait for somebody to maybe make that first initial thing and then he would you know have a conversation whatever okay so that part's cool and fine I don't think people are having as at, I mean a little bit more difficult these days meeting people just because the last two years with the COVID and stuff there's so much online dating which is so tough because it's just looking at pictures swipe 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 it's easy to just go someone because there's no real connection there so that part's a little tricky but I think what's really become challenging is the amount of people that are in, in relationships that don't prioritize those relationships and there's so many, you know, breakups, divorces, all these things. And it's so easy to just be like, okay, bye. You know, this isn't fulfilling my needs, whatever. Never saying someone to stay in a relationship that is, you know, irreparable or any kind of abuse, those kind of things for sure. But people should be willing to stick it out a little bit. The other thing that he brought up, which I found very interesting because I think a lot of people end up bored in a relationship, you know, the excitement's no longer there after a period of time obviously one of the best ways to have new excitement is if each person continues to improve and change upon themselves so I hear it a lot um, a lot of my friends that have ended up divorced or whatever what had happened especially when they were together younger I see this a lot where one of the spouses grew changed improved upon themselves whatever that looked like for them and the other person stayed the same so no one did anything wrong per se. One person's mad because you changed. The other person's mad because you're still the same person you were 20 years ago, like grow up already, right? So that happens. And another interesting thing that he brought up, which I thought was really funny, is that you have to have more than one thing that makes you like interesting or special. So maybe it's you're very, very attractive. And so yeah, that pulls in a lot of potentials and whatever, but if you have nothing else beyond that you're really attractive, the other person's gonna get really bored and tired of you, obviously. And what if you are very successful, but that's all you focus on? He was talking about that, I guess, earlier in his 20s. He was dating a girl and that originally was an attractor to her. You know, he was very successful in life, you know, at a younger age, but then she said it was very one dimensional. Like he had really nothing else going on for him and he was boring. Um, so you have to try to, do something else too like are you funny are you engaging are you caring you know do you make people feel special something else beyond that one thing that maybe you have and there are some people that maybe are 30 40 50 60 years old and they've been kind of relying on that one thing that they have whether it's you know a, a physical trait their looks their body um, their their status you know whatever it might be they're funny but it's only that one thing and then people get to know I'm like, okay, you're funny, but sometimes we gotta be serious too. Like, is there anything below that funny? Um, but I just wanted to point that out because I feel like there's such a hard line sometimes where people are like, well, this is who I am and take it or leave it. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be loved and appreciated and be enough wherever you are. But if you literally have no desire to ever improve upon anything in your life, whether that's, you know, your health or your spiritual wellness or your, you know, intelligence or, you know, career, or whatever, you have no desire to improve upon anything at all. Like you're 
really going to be a really boring person to be around. And I'm sure that there's people that are in relationships with other people that really just, you know, they just want to stay themselves too. And they probably live a very like sad and boring life, to be honest with you. Um, the other thing that he had brought up were people that are maybe together for a very long time. Like, especially I see it a lot, even in friends of mine, where the kids are older, they're off to college or out on their own or whatever that looks like. And then the, the parents look at each other and like, what do we do? Because they've been living this, you know, life basically around their children and what that looks like as a family unit or, you know, just very involved with their children. And then they really have nothing left to talk about. And so he mentioned, you know, to go out and each get hobbies and friends or something to do that's outside of one another because when you've been with someone for you know 10 20 30 years and you're with them all the time even if you enjoy their company like at some point you need something more interesting from one or the other of you and whether you take up a new hobby interest or just you know start to taking care of yourself more or whatever it is that you do now that other person's like ooh, he's changed or she's changed and then there's that extra new interest going on um, and sure it could be something that you pick up together like oh you know we used to dance or we never dance let's go do that you know it could be something you do together but it could be something that you do apart so then you're like oh you know I'm going with my friends to go you know I don't know like go to the movies and all oh, the movie was interesting and we had fun and blah blah you have something new to talk about that being said um, obviously I'm single so take it with a grain of salt but I really just feel like I know a lot of people that are married and unhappy, um, and I know a lot of people that were married and are divorced, and I just see a lot of these common themes to where, I don't know if people get married for wrong reasons, what that looks like for them, you know, or they were married for right reasons and then just something, you know, along the way changed, but definitely relationships have changed. One of my friends had made a post the other day that it's just people don't value it and they're just so quick to leave and try and not to fix things. And I think there's a lot of that, but I also think that a lot of it was back in the day, because he was referencing back in the day stuff, you know, the 40s, 50s, whatever, where people just stayed together. It was different back then. Like people really needed one another and the roles were very unique where, you know, I'm going to say like 99% of the marriages were the wife stayed home, did the household and children duties and stuff. And the man went out and worked except for in the war that the women had to go. But in a lot of those scenarios, and it was, maybe they weren't happy, but it was just a partnership that they both needed. And I think now so many people are so used to doing everything on their own. They don't need someone else. So if they're going to be with someone else, there has to be some kind of, you know, desire and, you know, want to be with someone else. And how do you make that happen? And I don't know that it's good or bad that it's changed, but it's definitely changed. And then now, I mean, I know that this is all through times, but the last, you know, several years has been so much more with all the different gender identities and sexual identities. And so there's so many different ideas out there and, you know, poly relationships and so many things that in order to find something that maybe if you're a cis straight, you know, monogamous person, it's, there's maybe less of a dating pool for you, right? So all of these things are kind of changing the dating and marriage atmosphere, I believe. And I don't know, I just was trying to put that out there really just to kind of give someone some, you know, perspective and thoughts about how they may want to, you know, improve upon themselves. And you know that saying, like, become the person you would want to attract and then you'll attract that person. Think about that too. But obviously, like, I think of that and um, I wouldn't want to date somebody too much like me because I think that we would make each other crazy. And that's probably in a lot of cases, like if you have a really over the top personality and another person does, you're constantly going to be fighting for that limelight. If you're both really like chill and, you know, indecisive, then you're probably all just going to sit around and look at each other and not really know what to do. So you probably need some sort of, you know, balance. It's nice to have some of the important things in common, but it's also nice to have enough differences to keep things interesting. Um, oh my, so many, I'm pulling into my driveway and I know this seems so crazy and this is so like irrelevant, but you know, a couple months ago we got hit by the hurricane and all of my yard was wiped out and all my butterflies are gone, all my critters are gone and I see like 
probably 10 butterflies in my yard right now pulling in. So I'm going to go enjoy them for a few minutes. But anyways, think about relationships. I would love to hear your comments, whether you're in a relationship or you're not and why and, you know, what tips you would give someone. Maybe you've been in a relationship for a long time and you have a tip. Comment.